Hello, my name is uh, Barry Goodell. I'm a professor in the Department of Microbiology at the University of Massachusetts. I uh, have seen a lot of uh, information and some misinformation on various uh, microbiology techniques to help keep people safe during the pandemic. Uh, some of that is very good information, but some of it is not. And so I thought I'd uh, try to help uh, with a little bit of basic microbiology background. As a disclaimer, I do not work with coronavirus. Uh, however, I do work with airborne pathogenic microorganisms and uh, I have a BSL-2 certified lab that I run. So one of the issues that uh, we see commonly is how to protect yourself with a homemade mask, since in many cases, regular masks are not available currently. Well, there's been some good information, if you dig hard enough, on types of fabric that are actually useful for masks uh, to protect uh, perhaps as well as an N95 mask. Although, another disclaimer, uh, part of how you use that material uh, affects the, um, or alters the effectiveness of any mask. Uh, one of the issues that comes into play is when you have any sort of a mask, particularly uh, the commercial masks, which are kind of about this size, shaped like this, um, they may not be all that effective simply because of the leakage which occurs around the edges of these. And of course, if you're wearing a mask like that, you can't have a beard like I do. Um, also, just around the nose, uh, there can be problems, uh, even with the metal strips, the formable metal, metal strips that help conform about around this odd shape of your nose as it connects uh, to your, your face. Um, so there's often a lot of leakage there, and that is where a lot of uh, contaminants actually will enter the mask. So we can help mitigate that with a different type of mask, and particularly if you're making one that's homemade. Okay, so um, I'll show you in a few minutes, but uh, there are different types of common fabrics that have been tested, and many of these fabrics really aren't all that good. For example, t-shirt material or uh, sweatshirt material or fleece material really have not been shown to provide all that much protection against virus particles entering. But one publication from uh, Cambridge has uh, done a fairly good job of uh, looking at fabrics and found that tightly woven cotton fabric, relatively thick cotton fabric, and two layers of that material, such as tea towel material, actually do a good job, and in many respects uh, will do, not in all respects, but uh, in many respects will do a decent job, cl close to that of an N95 mask in protecting you. And uh, my perspective is when you can actually protect more of the edge, then you'll actually do a better job than many N95 masks, particularly if they're not particularly, uh, particularly if they're not all that uh, well fitting to the face. So um, we've gotten some tea towel material. This is again, thick, tightly woven cotton fabric. Uh, and I've got two layers here. So I'm gonna get these out. Uh, this is one layer, two layers. Uh, and you want to have the top of both of these. These are just towels that we picked up at uh, various fairs uh, and uh, actually in different travels around uh, different places in the world. Uh, so they're all cotton. Uh, there's just a standard tea towel type of uh, material. Put them around uh, your face. You don't have to get it too far up into the eyes. Uh, over the bridge of the nose. Uh, this is just a standard paper type clip. Um, that I'm going to use to temporarily fasten uh, in the, the back. I can do that. There we go. Um, and that's just a temporary fitting so that we can then take this elastic stretch material, uh, which could be pantyhose or an old pair of tights that are cut up, or uh, in this case, it happens to be a neck gaiter. And uh, we put that over the head, bring it down far down the neck as you can get. We're gonna fix that in just a little bit. Adjust it around in the back. Try to get it out of the eyes. And uh, the purpose is not to tuck this in uh, because this isn't good material for filtration. 
you want to have the tea towel material up against your skin in all cases. This stretch elastic material is just there to keep everything form fit and you can pop off this clip now and everything stays in place quite well actually. Um, so this is an easy way to make a, a mask. Now, um, if you want to tuck this material in, and uh, people are fashion conscious, I suppose, uh, but, uh, you know, do a neat job. It's not going to be as pretty as a regular mask, but it will do an effective job in mitigating the edge effects of a regular type of mask. Plus, you're working with two layers of the tea towel, which is shown to have good uh, effectiveness in preventing particles of uh, viral size from entering. So it's a good substitute. Nothing is perfect, of course, but it's a reasonable substitute. Now, there's been concern, how do you take off a mask and do that carefully? Do not touch your mask normally, okay? Your mask is contaminated on the outer surface once you've been walking around with other people, okay? But when you need to take it off, grab it by, you know, around the cheekbones, from the outside, with your fingers. Don't invert the mask. Pull it out like this. Pull it out like that and then directly over your head, taking the whole thing at the same time. And then take this and pop it right into a bowl or maybe a sink that you've already prepared of warm, soapy water. Just drop it right in and immediately go back and wash your hands now. In fact, wash your hands and also wash your face, including around the nostrils and the mouth. And that will help protect you about as good as you can be protected without professional personal protective equipment. So I leave you with that and I hope it helps. Thank you.